Noah's Ark is the largest water park in the entire United States. Located in the Wisconsin Dells, this massive water park features nearly 50 slides across 70 acres. These slides cover every genre imaginable, and there really is something for everyone. And that makes it one of the country's best water parks too. But there are some things you should know before you visit, and in this video, I will be reviewing Noah's Ark. The park originally opened in 1979 as a family entertainment center known as Noah's Incredible Adventure. Founded by the Waterman family, the park didn't have a single water slide in its opening year, and that's pretty crazy now that the park is what it is today. But the park added their first water slide in 1980, and there was no turning back. They just kept adding more and more water slides and pools each year. This FEC renamed and rebranded themselves as Noah's Ark Water Park. In 1994, the Gantz family purchased the park, and they continued the steady investment. It was under their ownership that Noah's Ark added most of their thrill slides, such as the Black Anaconda Water Coaster and Scorpion's Tail, which was America's first looping water slide. In 2012, Noah's Ark was purchased by Palace Entertainment, the American division of Park Ace Reunidos. While Palace Entertainment has continued to invest in the park, They've focused more on aesthetic improvements over new slides. They've also made a series of moves that have disappointed locals. In their first year of operation, they closed or removed five different attractions. One, the old curse of the Crypt Madhouse, remains standing but not operating to this day. Although, to Palace's defense, I always thought it was a little weird a water park at a madhouse. Ride closures are a common issue at Noah's Ark even today. Because they have so many attractions, they can sometimes struggle to staff them all. I visited this park twice. Both visits occurred in the middle of summer. Yet in each visit, multiple slide towers were closed. In 2021, the entire east and west ends of the park were completely blocked off, presumably due to staffing. Then in 2019, two of the older slide towers were closed for the day. And I'm not the only one who has had this issue. At least when the park has a water slide closed, it's usually one of the older ones. They also will sometimes only run one side of a specific slide tower. The biggest impact is the loss of capacity. Noah's Ark is a very popular water park. The Wisconsin Dells are packed to the brim with tourists all summer, and this water park is one of the town's most popular attractions. Heck, many hotels advertise special packages including this water park. And since Noah's Ark is only open for Memorial Day weekend through Labor Day weekend, there never is a quiet period to visit this park. So if you visit Noah's Ark, expect to wait in lines. My first visit took place on a Sunday, and all the slide towers had lines to the bottom of the stairs just one hour after opening. My visit in 2021 was on a weekday. Everything was a walk-on for roughly the first hour, but crowds increased exponentially during that second hour. And since there is no skip the line pass, my best recommendation is to arrive early. Try to arrive in your bathing suit to save some precious time so you're ready to go once opening time hits. The other wrinkle is that Noah's Ark has two separate entrances. The main entrance is in the very back corner by the old slides. Then there is a second entrance attached to the preferred parking lot, which is closer to the park's newer and more popular slides and on that note, there are two things to know about parking. One, the lot is cash only. The main ticket booth and stands inside the park accept credit card, but not the parking booth for some reason. Two, parking is pretty costly for a water park. Standard is $20 and preferred is $25. Usually I purchase regular parking, but I think it makes sense to get preferred at Noah's Ark. It's only $5 more and you'll have a much better start to your day. And if you're thinking about walking from the main entrance to the preferred entrance, you can do it, it is just a very long walk. There are two main advantages to using the preferred entrance. One, far less people enter through here, so if you need a locker or a changing room, it's far less crowded. Two, and more importantly, you are roughly 0.3 miles from the other entrance, and you're much closer to the park's most popular slides. This allows you to beat the crowds there. My recommendation is to prioritize the park's four most popular slides immediately after it opens. I would start with Time Warp if that's a must. 
This is the family bowl slide. It has a painstakingly slow line, and because it's slightly in the direction of the main entrance, this slide will fill up before all the others. The initial drop has some decent speed, and there is a wild turn to the pitch black bowl, but you quickly decelerate and slowly circle around the bowl. After Time Warp, I would recommend riding the Black Anaconda Water Coaster. This is easily the park's best attraction, and if you enjoy it, now is the time to get your re-rides. This is one of the best water coasters in the world. Black Anaconda is a long ride, and every single drop delivers some sort of airtime. The second and third drops really pop you out of your seat, about as much as a water slide can. The other drops only offer weak pops of airtime, but again, that's still thrilling when you have zero restraints. The uphill sections in this one aren't super fast, but Black Anaconda is just pure fun. I then would prioritize Raja and Stingray, the two half-pipe slides. Raja usually is the longer line. One, it's more aesthetically pleasing, as this one looks like a giant cobra, and it's just stunningly beautiful. Two, this slide has the strictest weight requirement in the entire park. Single riders must be between 130 and 265 pounds, and double riders need to be between 220 and 440 pounds combined. The weighing process really slows down dispatches. The initial tube section is slow, but you have a little bit of steam into the half pipe, so the initial drop will give some very weak air time. Stingray is Raja without the decorations and pre-drop. The drop in the half pipe is very steep for a water slide, so it's quite zippy. And if you ride in a double tube, one lucky rider gets to experience that drop going backwards, which feels amazing. This slide also has two half pipes side by side for added capacity. If you arrived at opening and went straight to these four rides, you will have experienced the park's four most popular slides within the first 20 or 30 minutes. Compare that to the 45 to 60 minute waits they will pull midday. Now what about the rest of the slide lineup? My next favorite slides are the extreme body slides, and these are some of the only attractions in the park that usually don't have lines. Scorpion's Tail is a drop pod slide with a great freefall sensation on the steep initial plunge. You then navigate the record-breaking loop, which really feels and looks more like an overbank. Whatever you call it, it certainly feels strange to slide uphill on a body slide. Once you crest the top of the loop, you rapidly build up speed, and there's this little dip before the final splashdown that gives some air time because of how much speed you have. This is a very wild slide, but you do need to watch out for your back. Your body may slide up the side of the wall during the loop, which is unlubricated, so it does not feel nice. Point of no return is right next door. This speed slide goes straight down, and it's a smoother experience. The rest of the slide lineup consists of filler slides. All of the other slides are average to decent. None are bad, but none are musts. I basically will hit whatever is a short wait. If I'm going to wait for something, it's going to be for Black Anaconda. For example, you have the Quadzilla Mat Racing slide. This is another one that uses a minimal weight due to its capacity, and while it is a clone, the racing element and final plunge are always fun. Then there are three family raft slides. Flying Gecko and Congo Bongo have your usual series of turns, while Calabunga is a giant triple down. I was optimistic the latter would have some airtime, but you lose too much speed before each drop to get any. Towards the original entrance, you have the older slides. Toucan Twister is a body slide tower with five different options. These slides have basic layouts, but the line is usually much shorter than the tube slides. For the tube slides, you have Bermuda Triangle, Black Thunder, and Monkey Rapids. At least one of these towers has been closed in each of my visits. Supporting the slides are two different wave pools, two different lazy rivers, and multiple water play areas for kids and adults. These are great places to go if you want to relax after waiting in a long line. You then have some weird attractions for a water park as well. The oddest still open is Flash Flood, a Hopkins Shoot the Shoots ride. While you can find this attraction at a lot of amusement parks, you usually have to wear shoes, and that can wreck them. At Noah's Ark, you can ride this attraction barefoot, which makes the 50-foot tall wave much more appealing. Then you also have 4D Theater. I didn't feel like sitting down in an air-conditioned building while in a bathing suit, so I passed on this one. 
and there used to be more weird non-coasters, but Palace started to remove them. Now, despite the biblical name and fancy sign, the park does not have much theming. I think it's a missed opportunity when you have a theme as cool as Noah's Ark. The most the park does is naming each attraction after a different animal. The park does look nice though. The slides have fresh coats of paint, the park is very clean, and there are some trees along the main midways. I've never had a meal at Noah's Ark, so I cannot comment on the quality of the food. There are just too many restaurants I enjoy to eat in the main strip to fill up here. Considering the quantity and quality of offerings, it really is surprising admission is only $35 to $40. There are plenty of water parks that cost far more. And if you have a Palace Platinum Pass for another park like me, it's worth noting that it cannot scan at the main entrance as of 2021. I had to go to guest relations for them to process it and let me in the park. This is an issue not exclusive to Noah's Ark. Many of Palace's parks had this problem. So do I recommend Noah's Ark? If you can arrive at opening, yes. The biggest flaw with this park is that it's a victim of its own success. It gets very busy. If you can hit the most popular slides during that first half hour, you can have a stress-free day experiencing everything else. However, if you arrive later in the day, you'll have to spend most of your day waiting for the most popular slides. Black Anaconda alone makes Noah's Ark worth visiting if you love water coasters, and the rest of the slide lineup is very deep. You have two wonderful speed slides, two fantastic half-pipe slides, and then dozens of other slides to round it out. While the remaining slides may not be standouts, you just have so much variety to pick from. So those are my thoughts on Noah's Ark Water Park, America's largest water park. What are your thoughts on this place? Have you been there? I would love to hear your thoughts on this place down in the comments. If you enjoyed this review, I'd appreciate it if you gave this video a like, and you considered subscribing, because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.